series from Houston, Texas at Tech in North America. My name is Jeremy Chapman. And I'm Jake Zabrowski. So today we have a really exciting show in store. Jake, we're going to talk about something intrinsic to the Office 365 Continuous Innovation Cycle Change Management. That's right. We're going to talk about how we release new features to the Office 365 service, what it means to be an evergreen service, and what that update cadence looks like. We're going to talk about some new exciting programs on how you can be first to access new changes and also how we're going to communicate to you about those changes. Right, so lots in store over the next 10 or so minutes, but before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia. True or false, you have a minimum of two weeks to experience new Office updates in the first release program. So Jake. What does the continuous innovation cycle mean for the new office service? Yeah, the continuous innovation cycle means that it's one, it's really different than how we've delivered features on premise in the past. It means that you're going to have an evergreen service that's always up to date, that has the latest innovations to deliver to you and your end, your end users. Right, in the past we had these big chunks of change every couple of years, two and a half or three years at a time, where we'd release a bunch of new features, right? That's right, we had three years of pent up innovation that we would deliver to you all at one time. Let's actually look at what that, that means. So we would develop our product over a three year period and then we would release it to you, our customers. At the end of that period, when we release it, you would make the decision of whether you go forward with deploying that or not. And that was a significant amount of change. You had this big hurdle to overcome. You know, 36 months of innovation is a lot of stuff to take in one bite. So you would look at your desktops, your servers, your processes, your uh, all, of the, all that information to make a determination of whether you wanted to adopt that or go through that process or not. A lot of customers actually made the decision to wait a release. So that meant they had more time to prepare, they had double the amount of change to take on at one time, and really basically a lot of pent up right. debt. But here I've got a big, huge, like a rock climbing hill to, to do, and some people might be extreme sportsmen, but in this case we want to be able to make that change a lot less impactful in terms of my application compatibility, all the things I plan for, user training, those types of things, right? That's exactly right. So the amount of change when we talked about change management in the past and deploying on-premise servers was huge. And so you know, fully understand that can be a daunting subject. When we talk about incremental change or evergreen service, change coming on a daily or monthly basis, that can seem like a big daunting thing too. But the realities of the new evergreen model with the service is a lot different from that. So in an evergreen service, change comes in ripples or small increments, which means that it's much easier for you to be aware of, adopt, adapt to, and then deploy to your end users and get them to use those new updates. And we actually dedicated a whole show on this back in the fall with Tall Cheapoff, where we talked about the 70 or so new innovations that we had on the client side alone. But again, all of these are very small, easy to consume changes where we got a lot of net new functionality that users were clamoring for, right? That's right. Basically, since fe mid-February of last year, we've deployed over 90 uh, improvements of, of significance to the service since that point in time. So we are functioning in this world today. But beyond that, we have a lot of different um, features that we're updating, different update types. So why don't you go through yeah. all the different feature types? So in an evergreen world of a cloud service, the way you have control is through communication. And so it's incumbent upon us to provide you with great information as early as possible about what's coming to the service. So I want to quickly go through how we categorize different changes and the time, time frames of disclosure that we provide. So the first type of changes are updates. And those updates are really how do we change existing scenarios, existing features within the existing user flow. And so for those, we're announcing a few things which we'll talk about in just a minute. But we're going to provide you with a roadmap so you can have a 30 to 60 day, 30 to 90 day view, and we're also going to provide you with a notification, an earlier notification, when that's imminently coming to the service. We also have a big category. So net new changes. Now, the important thing with these are they actually are net new capabilities. Things like OA for iPad or uh, Office, uh, Office for iPad, those types of things are net new changes. It means that we don't break existing customization because they're net new consumption models. That's right. We will release these and have them available at the same time as the announcement when we do release this type of change. Yeah, that's right. It's never been a more exciting time for Office in terms of the new services, the new clients, and the new capabilities that we're introducing. 
These don't impact your current users. These are things that are outside of the user flow that you'll be able to adopt on your own when you decide to. The next set of changes are called disruptive changes. They're called disruptive on purpose. We want to make sure we're really, really careful with this type of change. These are the change types that would require you to take action within your environment to maintain service continuity and keep data flowing. So we give you a minimum of one-year notification, and in many cases, through our lifecycle policies and through our system requirements, up to five-year notification for things like clients on when they will change so you can adapt and be prepared for those changes. And these are for the important change types, like having to go from, say, a Windows XP desktop operating system or IE 6, 7, or 8 moving to a newer browser, because these types of changes take a lot longer to implement than, say, changing some of the configuration changes, like maybe uh, DNS settings or router configurations or uh, internet service provider settings, those types of things. You're right. And so those configuration changes, which are smaller little tweaks like updating a DNS record, we will give you notification for those as well. And depending upon the size of the change, anywhere between a month and a year for notification of those types of changes. Right. And finally, in terms of just keeping the service running, we want to make sure that software updates, we're going to apply those as needed for security reasons, security updates, and any bug fixes from a stability or performance perspective, those just continually roll out, but they don't break existing functionality. That's right. We are managing and patching and updating the service every day. We have a very aggressive schedule for security patching and whatnot. That all happens in the background. The only time we would notify you is one of those instances where we would have a service maintenance window, and we'll give you notification of that in the service health dashboard. All right, but let's drill in, because we, we did see a couple of little things on the slide in terms of 21 days of notice for new changes. So let's talk about the current release process and really how that changes now with what we're announcing around the first release program. That's right. We've heard a lot of feedback from customers that they need more information earlier in the process. And so we're trying to do that while maintaining a really rapid pace of innovation within the process. So we have our internal development and test processes. We actually have one of the world's largest implementations internally at Microsoft of Office 365. All right, we have a couple hundred thousand seats. They're distributed globally, uh, really consuming data from all of our data centers, all of our distribution points. But that doesn't go far enough because we want to make sure that we have enough customers testing that and also that when you're implementing these changes that you have a heads up in terms of when the change is coming and to be able to use the change if you want to opt in as being a first user of that change. That's right. So right now, we do our testing. We do our security testing and all of that, all of that process. And then we release. And a lot of notification has come at release. And so we need to make some improvements there. The first thing that we're improving is notification. I mentioned that we're going to be releasing a roadmap for the product. In the past, we've always had a roadmap. It's been under NDA. It required our, our sales teams and our partners to deliver that on our behalf, and that took a lot of time. We know that we don't have that time in an evergreen cycle, and so going forward, starting in the next few months, you will have a 30 to 90 day roadmap that'll be published on a website for anyone to consume. So that'll give you a nice longer term view in the near term of what's coming to the service so you can be prepared. Additionally, this yep. is exciting as well, we have a new program called First Release. So this is really cool because basically <laughs> before this change goes into the release phase, the full production phase where everybody gets to experience it, First Release will still be fully validated, fully tested, fully released level code, but you'll get it two weeks before the rest of the population, right? That's exactly right. So for major updates, major end user impacting updates for Exchange and SharePoint, we're going to have a more handheld experience for those things. And these aren't small little changes. These are the big changes that you really want to be in front of. So first release is a program you can choose to opt into. It'll be a tenant-wide setting that you as the admin will be able to choose whether you're in or out. We'll respect that choice within 24 hours, whether you're in and you want out or you're out and you want in. Uh, and that'll give you control over when these major updates will happen. So release for that, T equals zero. So that, that's the actual release date where everything is fully baked, fully validated, fully tested, the release level code. Again, it's not a preview, it's not a beta. This is the full code. That's right. That's general availability of the code. So right. in addition to the roadmap where you're going to get a longer term view, seven days ahead, we will notify all customers, whether they're in first release or not, that this change is imminently coming to the service. So right. everybody will be notified. And then, to your point earlier, Customers that have chosen to stay in the standard release group will have an additional two weeks or 14 days between when we release it to the first release customers and when we will start rolling it out to the existing customers. Right, so think of it like if you don't opt into first release, it's like hitting the pause button. 14 days later, that change will be enforced effectively in your client. 
but you've had the option, maybe you have a test tenant or something else where you can use first release prior to it going into production. So the main thing is, right, what you're writing here, 21 days between initial notification of the change and it actually being available to the broadest set of users in the, you know, the released program. That's right, release. so for those major updates to the end user facing features, starting with Exchange and SharePoint, you will have that notification process in place. But what happens if I miss maybe some of these change notifications through, through this program, what can I do to find out more? That's another great point. You know, we've also found that we have to provide you with really great and consistent places to actually go to get the information on what's changing. So we've recently made some really significant improvements inside of the product, inside of the Office 365 Admin Center to communicate directly to you, specifically via Message Center. So if you're using Office 365 today, you should be familiar with Message Center. We've been communicating to you about those big disruptive changes there for quite a while. And in the past few weeks, we've actually released some new uh, uh, communication types within the admin center. Prevent or fix issues, again, those are the disruptive changes where we're going to give you direction and explain how you need to make sure to prevent those issues. Plan for changes where we're going to communicate around those things like first release features. So here's some features that are imminently coming to this product. And then stay informed is where we're going to give you information on things like the roadmap or things like uh, your subscription ending or new, new offerings within the, within the product as well. Right, so in the past you might have seen like in prevent or fix issues the end of life of Windows XP. That's or right. Or Internet Explorer end of life <laughs> messages, those types exactly. of things. Exactly, so we give you a lot of information within the message itself. We link you to additional information and resources to allow you to help manage the process, and then some additional information on when the action's required, when things will start to happen and take place. Right, so a lot of ways to notify. So the public roadmap will be in a public site off of, off of office.com, right, Jake? That's right, it'll be published on office.com. Also, make sure you follow blogs.office.com, that's blogs.office.com, to stay up to date with all feature releases. We do a lot of uh, promotion of those updates there as well. Right, so a lot of really exciting changes in terms of how we do change management, a lot of things that people have been asking for. But before we wrap up today's show, let's have a look at today's trivia. True or false, you have a minimum of two weeks to experience new Office updates in the first release program. So all these changes are really things, again, that people have been asking for for a long time in terms of having advance notice about how to implement the change, what's coming, those types of things. It'll be really cool once we see the roadmap. How, how far out is that? Stay tuned to the blog and find out more. Right, so all this information more is really the best place to go to is blogs.office.com for information. You can also follow us on microsoft.com slash garage for garage shows or at Office Garage. We'll tweet all the changes that we see as well That's right. as part of this. So thanks for watching, everybody, and goodbye for now.